Welcome to Photo Finds. I am your host, Kevin, and this week we are starting at the Magic Kingdom, where this is your guidebook of the week, but we are mostly here to see the Main Street Bakery. Now, as you can see, this is a location that's been here for a while, and uh, it's reopened, and it, it's got a Starbucks uh, symbol on the outside of it, visible here as well, um, beyond this uh, display window, as well here at the very front entrance to the, uh, to the bakery. Now, that may look like it's um, kind of intrusive on Main Street. This has been a somewhat of a controversial addition. But as you can see from this picture, as well as the ones once inside, Starbucks doesn't really take over the uh, theming of the environment. It still looks very much like um, turn of the century Main Street. Uh, and uh, they're selling things such as sandwiches. I'll zoom in a little bit here. You can see the sorts of breakfast items that they're selling. Uh, this happens until about 11 o'clock, apparently, uh, but then even after that, if you ask for it, they might be able to get you the uh, breakfast sausages, breakfast sausage um, sandwiches um, into later in the day. Uh, no word on whether that's true of the bacon and uh, ham sandwiches as well. Now here is what the prices look like for um, the other items on the menu. Uh, as you can see, it is a basically a full-sized uh, Starbucks menu, uh, and uh, the prices are in line more or less with what you would see at a Starbucks anyway, so there's not that much of a markup. Now we'll take a look around the um, shop. You'll see that there are two sides to it, um, so the line can wind around on this left side or on the other side over there, so they've really thought through the capacity issues. Put up a lot of interesting theming around the outside, telling a story about traveling the world with these pictures. And as you can see, the usual condiments are set up on this side here. Uh, and there's nothing all that unusual about the condiments. You see the Main Street Bakery, there's the B here. Uh, and if we zoom in over in this part here, you'll see that they do have Starbucks logo um, sleeves. Those are the things you use to hold the hot coffee with. Uh, but other than that, Starbucks doesn't really take over the look or feel of the entire place. I enjoyed this. This is their digital um, drink ordering system here. And it was enclosed in kind of a uh, period era box. And really, so it tried to be as un unobtrusive as possible. A couple more views of the um, baked goods. We'll get a closer look at those in just a moment. Here we are. So you can see that they've uh, really got uh, the bakery concept to heart. Um, price is not that unusual $2.39 for the large sugar cookie. And there are the scones, two seventy nine, as well as some of the fresh fruit items that are available in the uh, central refrigerator there. They do have some things for sale uh, aside from this, such as uh, the cereal individual portions, um, or these, which are like flavor shots, really, so that you can um, add some flavor to bottled water. This is the other side of the uh, facility, looking outwards. And then some of the photos on this side showing world travel, people participating in tea ceremonies, uh, and then even some um, looking around coffee and tea, uh, different varieties. Now, at the far end here of the same facility, there is a doorway to the glass blowing facility. Um, when I asked why they didn't just wall this in, uh, I was told that they wanted to, they tried to, but it was a fire code issue, and so um, they left it open. Now, they, um, they don't um, let people walk through this area, however. They do have it roped off because they had problems with people coming in what is essentially the exit of the uh, area and then grabbing coffees um, from people as they were completed, and so basically stealing coffee. This is along the back wall, and it caught my eye because it's clearly a modern picture showing the outside of the bakery. Um, I'm not completely convinced that these are not the uh, guys outside of Casey's Corner here, uh, but the rest of them, I'm, I'm guessing, are people like Imagineers. And there's one in particular, um, apparently the owner and the owner's wife is a, a portrait nearby. So they've got a complete backstory for these characters. We are here at the Aladdin's Magical Carpets ride where these tent uh, structures are new and this is for the Fast Pass Plus. Um, they've got multiple entrances for pretty much every attraction around the park now. We'll look at a couple of those. Uh, this is a new area for me anyway. Um, I don't think it was new for others. Uh, for the Jack Sparrow game over in uh, Adventureland, this was in a former um, uh, counter service window area over by the bathrooms um, next to the pirate shop. So there you can see the claw uh, that forms this part of the, uh, the symbol. We are also looking into Pecos Bill. 
where um, the root beer slush is reportedly new. This is the machine they use to make it, and this is what you get for $3.99. It's, I think, a 16-ounce cup next to the regular water size cup over here. Uh, there's also a $9 version that comes in a, in a boot. Um, I have to say it tasted just like root beer. There was um, some very small ice cubes is the way to describe the slush, uh, and it's um, probably uh, refreshing only if you're looking for something that's extra cold. Now, uh, the menus there these days are digital, and in fact, you can see by this uh, rawhide stitching that that's um, how they connect from the top menu to the lower menu. Uh, they just kind of roll it up, um, and it's all, it's all digital, of course, but it is nicely themed, so I enjoyed that touch. And while we were there, we noticed that the uh, tomato ketchup, the Heinz ketchup, uh, had changed since we'd last looked. This is the variety that uh, has sugar rather than corn starch, high fructose corn syrup. Uh, and uh, this appears to be the case resort-wide now, so they've made a switch in their ketchups at Disney World. Country Bear Jamboree having a little bit of work done across the top here. In fact, that sign itself is kind of new uh, and uh, temporary. Over in Liberty Square, this zone where the turkey, cart, turkey leg carts usually was uh, is under construction. Uh, the turkey leg carts are off to my right side of the picture, and we will see what's going into this spot in a moment. Here next to the Haunted Mansion, the Counting House is currently the home to Disney Visa, and they will be going in that spot that was under construction a slide ago. And notice the 1771 um, sign at the top. There are no accidental 71s since this 1971 was the opening year of the Magic Kingdom. This obviously is yet another tribute. Now this area does belong to the Haunted Mansion, so we'll see a re return to it as probably a Fast Pass Plus area um, once that comes up. Speaking of Fast Pass Plus, here's the entrance for It's a Small World. Why are they all here? Why are they staffed? Well, because Disney World was conducting a test this past weekend of the FastPass Plus uh, wristbands. A uh, few thousand people staying at some of the resorts got to test it out. And the results were um, very positive from the guest survey's point of view. Uh, they were a little mixed on the technology side. Occasionally things didn't work, but those were glitches. Peter Pan's flight going down for a rehab for about a month, I think it is, later this, later this um, summer. Uh, and uh, no word exactly on what that is. I wonder if they're going to reconfigure the Fast Pass area actually during that month. Speaking of being reconfigured, this of, is the Princess Fairy Tale Hall exterior, looking just a little bit different. They've uh, removed a little bit more and prepped some poles, presumably for signage. And we're going to look around the Seven Dwarfs Mine coaster, which, as you can see, has gotten even more uh, lattice work around the outside, the hill area, and the lower. Um, turn that we've seen through the one window here is now being covered up by a bit of an earthen berm. And you can see that they're um, installing more and more show features around the outside of it. Here's a different view of that same twist and you can see that it would go uh, pretty far banking to the left as we go around that corner. A couple other views of the rock work completed, almost done, not started yet. You can see the different stages of what the rock work looks like. Obviously quite a lot going on here when this thing will be finished. A very involved looking mountain. And around the back side, the stroller parking area is new. The whole planter uh, was behind walls until recently, and now, of course, we can access straight up to the walls on this Mediterranean village here, which will be the uh, Prince Eric area uh, opposite Little Mermaid. And so it's got kind of a Little Mermaid feel to the rock work here, maybe partly Splash Mountain, kind of partly Catastrophe Canyon looking up here as well. A couple views of that shopping area, and then swinging a little bit closer to the... Uh, um, storybook Circus side, you'll see another wall going into place here next to a bank that goes right next to the uh, walkway. And that walkway has pushed back. Now this zone was previously uh, behind walls. This wall was out here where I'm standing, uh, meaning that this was a choke point. It was quite narrow and now it's pushed back. And so you can see a little bit more of the theming here for the uh, Ariel's Grotto. Looking into the other window, you can see another curved bank, an immediate banking to the um, first banking to the left and then turning to the right and banking to the right uh, gives you a sense for the dynamics of this ride when it will eventually be finished. This caught my eye um, in the shop on Main Street, the Athletic Club, beautifully by Disney, uh, shows a bunch of beauty products. And as you can see, uh, the tops of all of those are labeled for things having to do with princesses. So there's a crown, there's a slipper, there is a key, there's a, an apple, and so on, a mermaid shell. 
Uh, and it's things like um, stuff for your eyes, uh, lip gloss, uh, and uh, nail polish. Vinyl Mission Park series that was new to me, showing a number of things that uh, continue to expand into the park. So Countdown to Extinction slash Dinosaur. Uh, there's a vulture from Splash Mountain, Teddy Barra, looking great. This appears to be the goat on, on uh, Big Thunder, chewing on a stick of dynamite. The Santa Claus from Winter Summerland, which uh, seemed kind of unique. Uh, Tumble Monkeys from the uh, Lion King performance in Animal Kingdom. And then the Monsters University Vinyl Mission series uh, right on top of that, also new to me. Now the balloons that you see for sale outside uh, have always uh, featured ones like these, but these other ones here, I'm not sure how obvious it is in this picture, are brand new. They are completely round. Uh, they are not oblong or oval in shape. They are completely round and there's a Dumbo on one panel and then the uh, Beauty and the Beast and another. Um, this is the same thing. So you've got Goofy and yet another panel. So as the uh, the round thing spins around, you've got different panels that faces it. I believe it was um, ten dollars for that particular balloon. Switching parks to Epcot, you see that the front entrance is under construction. You can go to the right if you've got the new passes, and go to the left if you've got the old ones. And inside, they've removed temporarily the uh, vending cart that was here was having infrastructure issues. Presumably, they're fixing that. You can see that the the uh, former Fountain View ca uh, Bakery, which is soon to be the Starbucks in Epcot, is still heavily under construction. Round the corner from there, the walls point us to the character spot, which is uh, all the way on this side now of the Interventions hallway. And it's a different entrance showing you uh, all of the um, uh, switchbacks that are possible in case there's a long line in this area here to meet the characters. Now we didn't see any long line. In fact, there was only about five minutes wait when we went. On, it was on a weekend day, so I'm not sure. Uh, maybe those those um, boards out front and the construction walls are scaring people away from coming over to this zone just to get in line. But uh, there wasn't much of a line at all after this last nondescript room. You come around the corner and there you are confronted with the characters and their backdrops. So the characters available uh, when we went were Mickey, seen here with an Epcot backdrop, and Communicore Weekly symbol in the background, or Communicore, I should say, not Communicore Weekly. Uh, and then the Pluto backdrop um, with the monorail and Soren in the background. And then we finally saw Minnie uh, also showing an Epcot-like um, environment in her background, kind of more satellite and space themed in this set. So I don't know if they um, rotate the characters. One assumes that they do since they weren't specific to the characters. A couple of shots of the t-shirts available for individual lands. We saw several of those. I didn't want to take pictures of all of them. The Morocco construction continues and there's a look at what the scrim looks like during the daytime. It is of course themed to Morocco uh, as Disney likes to do. They put out themed scrims. We're here in the France Pavilion to look at L'Artisan des Glaces, which is the new ice cream shop uh, here taking the place of the former bakery in France. So it's ice cream and sorbet, and as you can see, they haven't changed the entryway. These uh, side counter um, and exhibits now have things having to do with dairy and milk and so forth, but the inside hasn't changed too much. They have gotten rid of this side service, and so they've made it just a single side service, a little less confusing that way, actually. Here were the available flavors, several flavors of ice cream and sorbet available. And as you can see, the prices are listed here, uh, $4 for one scoop or $6 for two scoops. Now the scoops are um, reasonably generous and they are extremely rich chocolates and extremely rich flavors in general. So we had a, a vanilla ice cream that was really too much in a single scoop for one person to handle all at once. It was a lot of richness to it. So it's a premier and a premium ice cream. On the back wall here, I thought this was interesting. The spoon dispenser, uh, after you take one out, recognizes by sensor that the spoon is gone and will dispense a new one with an electronic whirr. And that was an interesting thing I'd not seen in the Disney parks before. They advertise their 16 flavors on the outside of their facility. Now we're walking out the gate at International Gateway and notice a Cinderella and her prince. Um, presumably these are new folks who are in training for the Princess Fairy Tale Hall since traditionally this area here is used for characters who are in training. 
The Boardwalk Bakery is our destination just outside of Epcot. This has been open for a few weeks. We haven't been back here in a little while. Thought I would take a brief walk around to see such things as uh, the puns they have on the outside. Huge croissant being the proprietor, supposedly. I didn't pay too much attention to this bakery when it was, uh, when it was new um, and uh, hadn't been in here too much beforehand, so I can't say too much about what has changed with it. I do know that the grab-and-go fridge at the front here was um, uh, not quite, was bare in that picture here, but uh, was not quite there in my memory before, so that must have changed. Uh, and here's a shot of some of the baked goods that are possible. They have a number of sandwiches as well. You can see what they look like here. This is a lobster sandwich. Uh, and here is mozzarella and tomato, roast beef, and um, you can add different kinds of meats to your uh, salads and sandwiches as well. There are the sandwich choices. As you can see, the lobster sandwich, quite expensive at $16. The salmon sandwich comes highly recommended to me, although I didn't get a chance to try it, at $12. There's a list of the salads available as well. This nice tile mosaic over on the side. A, a reverse view of what the bakery looks like inside. Nicely themed. There's the fountain drinks, and some of them um, could be all you could... Um, unlimited refill drinks, and those are for sale here for $15.49. There's a shot of the condiment cart on our way out. We've switched over to SeaWorld, where this dolphin was 26 hours old when we snapped the picture. So a baby dolphin had just been born in the dolphin nursery. Really a cute thing, only about three feet long or so, um, and it's a, an amazing thing to see at SeaWorld. Can't see that in a whole lot of parks. The Sky Tower is now free for everyone, and this has not been the case uh, in a long time. They've gone back and forth on whether it was free for annual pass holders, and recently decided they're going to make it just free for everyone. They were testing off their, um, their fountains because it is the beginning of their Summer Nights promotion, which involves a brand new um, Shamu show, and then there's a fireworks show that happens after that as well, and a Sea Lions Tonight show. I had not previously seen these Barbies themed to SeaWorld, although I've been assured that they're not new. In fact, um, in addition to this playset, they had older Barbies which were lying around uh, as part of the kind of SeaWorld um, package. This booth caught my eye over in the kids' area selling hand print uh, things. I'd seen something like that elsewhere, perhaps at Cypress Gardens uh, slash Legoland, um, but it was my first time seeing it here. This was definitely new in the kids' area, the theming to make it look like it's underwater when you're winding your way around with that train. And since we were here, we popped into Sharks, the restaurant, which has a bar, and a truly unique bar, actually, because those are uh, living aquariums down below. So there's fish and, and other wildlife uh, right below you on the bar. An interesting thing. And the former Jaws um, photo location next to the Sharks exhibit uh, is soon to be a bistro of some sort, apparently. Now, this lighting scheme looked new to my eyes. I'd previously been, this is in Antarctica, the Empire of the Penguin. I'd previously been stuck in this room for 30 minutes or so. I don't recall it being quite so colorful. So maybe I just had never seen the lights switch around as much as they do, as well as this detail, which escaped me in the very final preview room of Empire of the Penguin. We're watching a little movie up here. Uh, there are penguin uh, marks on the floor, telling us perhaps where to stand, or perhaps trying to be a little bit like uh, Grizzly Hall at Magic Kingdom, showing that there had once been animals here. So Empire of the Penguin, as pretty as always, uh, I thought that it was a um, very photogenic place to shoot. Difficult to catch things sometimes because they're blurry, but this really caught my eye. Previously, only this section of fence had been up on our last visit. Now they've got fencing over most of the water area where the penguins can, uh, can gather speed and jump out of their exhibit if the nets are not there. So the nets have expanded their reach, although there are still some areas on the other side of the nets here where you can see you can get very close to the penguins, in fact. There's one just underneath uh, that young child, doesn't even know it's there. I had not been in the area previously at nighttime. You can see that there are lights inside of this supposed ice, and it really gives a different feel to the, um, to the area, a different kind of glow, and almost a kind of beauty and warmth um, that uh, is really very cool, and I'm glad that they were able to do that touch for this land. This is a former turkey leg uh, booth uh, near the Sea Lions. It is now, um, I'm sorry, it's a former reservations booth. It is now a turkey leg booth near the Sea Lions. Switching back to Disney, we come to the Rainforest Cafe, which has taken off uh, the 
the veil it has had recently for rehab walls. You can see an animatronic crocodile here out front of this large uh, waterfall and the uh, lava lounge being announced on this tunnel over the side here. This is an interesting looking tunnel uh, with some effects inside of it as though we were walking through the volcano that you saw around the corner, but it's really just a passageway because you come out through this little Mayan thing here and then this is the lava lounge which is attached to the, um, the waterfront. And uh, not too much in the way of theming back here, a little bit behind the bar itself, uh, but the rest of it just kind of stretches on. Um, and these seating areas here is not just for the taking, they are part of the restaurant, so you can't just show up here and, and uh, grab a spot. Um, only the high tops back at the bar, let's go back one slide here, uh, these are available for just walking up, but uh, the rest of them down here are not. You see there are some uh, non-moving birds around the outside, continuing the theme of the rainforest. And then every 30 minutes or so, the volcano erupts. Not sure how easy it is to see from this angle. Take a couple other angles here. You show some fire bursts that can come from the top of the volcano. Uh, and um, it's an interesting show and rumbles and makes some noise. So here we are uh, over at Once Upon a Toy, the other, uh, the other side of the marketplace. And there uh, was a promotion running from June 5 through June 23 for Wii U. Wii U. Um, which, as you can see, is a game system, and uh, it was just free for people to go try out. And so they were encouraging people to give it a shot and see what they could do. And then finally, we end over next to Splitsville, where Curl, um, the shop that's kind of uh, surfer-themed and has uh, got a lot of sunglasses, has recently moved from its home in Pleasure Island over to next to Splitsville. This was new this uh, past weekend, and you can see the evening shot of it here um, open for business already on the west side. That is it for this week of Photo Finds. We thank you as always for your attention, and we'll catch you next time.